Greetings, greetings, greetings. Hello to you, Crafty Monkeys. How are you? Am I on time? Am I on time? <laughs> I think I might have just made it by the skin of my teeth. Uh, five o'clock. How are you? Happy Friday. Is anybody else absolutely freaked out by how quickly the weeks go? I am. Uh, where? How does that happen? How does that happen that it is suddenly Friday? And what's worse is how does it happen that it's suddenly May? Can anybody please explain this? In fact, I was just saying to my friend today uh, that uh, I feel like for the last year, I have just been picked out of life and everybody else has been frozen like this. And then I've gone through this very weird, weird period for a year, you know, and then now someone has dropped me back into life and now I'm seeing people on the streets and things. And I'm going, oh, OK, I'm back. Does anybody else feel like that? Or is it just me? Is it just me? Anyway, hello, how are you, lovely crafty monkeys? Happy Friday. Woo! full weekend this weekend. Judith is going to be doing some weaving in just a few seconds. Um, a few seconds. That's freaked her out if she's watching. No, in an hour. And we've also got Svetlana's in the house. Oh, oh. She is going to be here tomorrow night and Sunday night. Those classes are sold out. Judith isn't. If you fancy a bit of weaving, you probably wouldn't be able to join in right now in terms of doing it because you have your strips that have got to be made. But... We get a video with the class, of course, and you get a pattern included if you buy now. So if you buy later, you have to buy the pattern. If you buy now, you get the pattern and the class. You can sit in the class right now or you can watch it later. Just saying, hashtag just saying. Uh, so that is what's happening here. Our newsletter went out today. If you're not a subscriber, head onto the website. There's a yellow box that pops up and it says, please put your email in. You do. And then we write to you every Friday. Isn't that nice that we write to you every Friday? <laughs> We've actually started a little thing as well called the Pause for Thought, where we're sort of putting some thoughts in there about things. So, you know, we're jigging it up a little bit. We're jigging it, we're jigging it. Anyway, I will say hello to um, a few of you. You can see Ruthie is watching. Hello, Ruthie, darling. You see, I, I can't see a thing, but I can see little pictures, and I always know when that is Ruth's picture, so I can see Ruthie's watching. Hello, darling. Um, and lots of other people. Now, of course, one person who is watching is my next guest. Yes, because of course every Friday night here we do a little bit of live chat but we also talk about classes and we talk about the industry that we are working in, the quilting, the sewing, the dressmaking, the art industry, the creative industry and we have a lovely expert on. Now tonight it's one of our new teachers. He's called Chris English and um, I am going to bring him on the camera in just a second but he's an amazing quilter. He's got a class with us coming up in a few weeks, which we'll talk about in a second. Lots of new tutors joining us actually uh, over the uh, next few months. So keep an eye on the website for lots of new tutors and classes. And of course, our new club launching in a month. You can only buy your annual membership for one month in June. Then you can pay monthly if you want, but that is coming up as well. Right, let me just put specs on as you do. Um, and yes, yes. Yes, I say. Let's bring him on. You know, I've got a dress on with tights. It's ridiculous. I'm sitting in. I'm going in my cupboard. I'm a bit decent. Worth your time, won't you? Chris English is in Hello. the house. How Hi. are you? How are you? All right. I'm very good. You know, every week, Chris, I do this. I don't turn the sound up on my phone, and then nobody can hear anything. So I'm just going to put the sound up. Then it looks awful because this big hand comes over the camera. So apologies. That's and hopefully fine. I don't turn the camera off like I usually do. There we go. Look, that's it. Full volume. Here we are. Can I hear you now? I hope so. Oh, that's better. That's good. better. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm very well. I've got to say, I've got to say, the first thing that has struck me is, it's staying, is it? You were, just, you were debating. Well, well, yes and no. It has had a trim, believe it or not. But um, <laughs> the, the kind of sides have had a bit of a trim. Yeah. I wanted to keep it long. I wasn't prepared to um, go shorter yet, but I think I will eventually. Eventually. It's just going to literally, every time you come on here to talk to us or do a class, it's going to get shorter and shorter and shorter. I've just realised my head's cut off on Facebook. I don't think Facebook are really bothered about me and my head, but I'll just put me on. <laughs> so I've got a little phone here, you see. What's happening here, you're new to this, of course, my lovely, is that yeah. I've got a phone that is watching this phone. This phone is Instagram. This phone is Facebook. You see? Technology. Yeah. It sounds Although, amazing. You lost me fairly early in that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it frustrating, though, that Facebook and Instagram are owned by the same company, which I believe is now Facebook, and yet you can't do a stream to both Facebook and Instagram at the same time? Yeah, that's, that's silly, isn't it? It should just be one thing, shouldn't it? Yeah. I think I need to get the phone to um, Mark. Yeah. Zuckerberg. 
Oh, it's like, you now. Oh, get it sorted. <laughs> Have you learned anything yet in technology land? You've been in there for years. <laughs> anyway, so how are you? How's your week been? Yeah, it's been good. A busy week at work, but um, uh, nice weather. So lots of time out and about and um, busy doing quilting as well. So working on a few different projects, getting all my stuff ready for um, Festival of Quilt, which I'm super excited about. I love that show. So super yeah. excited about that. And yeah, I've been doing loads of work, really. Are you going to be exhibiting at Festival of Quilts, Chris? Absolutely. And mm. I think that's the, that's the, the thing I love about Festival is that... Um, anyone can enter and it's not jury so one of what the i think one of the prizes is but all yeah. most of the categories anyone can enter so i tend i do tend to enter most categories regardless of whether my quilt meets the criteria or not yeah um, you know it's, it's a subjective thing isn't it so i think it's fine to um try and bend the rules a little bit yeah well do you know well you look like a man who would bend the rules to me i've got to say i've just got to say maybe it's the beard but you look like a man who would bend the rules um thank you let's I have think. a little chat about who you are because um you know not being rude i'm sure the world does know who you are but in case you know in case that one person is watching tonight who doesn't know who you are yeah that's a good point some people may not know me yeah let's have a little chat about your your background and your your history and um yeah, how did you, well, I mean, I know these, I know these answers, but let's start at the beginning. So how did you, I was going to say get into the quilting world, but let's talk about your creative sort of side, because yeah, you actually, absolutely. some people do it just as a kind of hobby and then it becomes their world. But you did actually study, didn't you? You went, you, yeah, well, tell us what you did. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I went, went to, um, I, I was okay at school. I wasn't hugely academic. And I was thinking about this the other day, but I was thinking back to um, my GCSE art class and yeah. we did all the usual drawing and stuff. But I do remember that I screen printed some fabric and I made it into a pair of board shorts. And that, that memory only came back to me the other day, but I think that was the start of my kind of um, textile journey. And from there, I went to college and I did like a um, multidisciplinary kind of design degree, uh, uh, diploma rather. Yeah. And you, you did graphics, fashion, which I was terrible at, um, textiles, and kind of 3D design. Um, and then in the second year, you chose to specialise in one. And I did textiles, and that led me to go to Liverpool Art College or university. And I did printed textiles for three years, which was incredible. But um, when I finished, I'd, I'd kind of been... Um, spending my days drawing and painting and uh, my nights um, socialising, I believe is the, the term. And no, A little was, beer or two, just a little beer or two. Yes, absolutely. And there wasn't really a job, a job that did that. So I, yeah. um, I, you know, I did various things. And then I went back to uni in Huddersfield, which is where I live now. And I did web design. Now that's what I do kind of for the day job. But in that time, I always... I always maintained an interest in art and design and fabric and um, anything kind of crafty, really, and anything sort of creative. So I love traveling. I love going to galleries. That's, I always kind of plan what galleries I'm going to go to when you can travel. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. And then, then I came across Quilton and I came across the, uh, the Liberty Book of Home Sewing. And there was a super simple pattern in there for a quilt. So I bought all my Liberty fabric and I had a go and I made it. And... I finished it and I loved the fact that I could finish it and I gifted it to somebody um, and that's a slightly different story but I loved I could choose the fabric piece it quilt it and eventually bind it after after a few moments but um, bind it and then gift it to somebody and it, the whole process was within my control and it it was unlike unlike work where things are often right or wrong and it's someone else's opinion um, it was the quilt I'd made and I was, I was pretty happy with it. So that's what I loved about it. And then yeah. sadly that quilt no longer exists because the person I gifted it to, their baby was sick on it, but rather than just wash it, they, they threw it away. What? I know, I know. And I keep telling this story and I think one day they're going to hear what? me tell it. Why, but... would you not, why would you throw away a quilt, a handmade quilt? Why would you just wash it? I mean, even if you think, oh, I can't put that in the washing machine, take it to the dry cleaners. Well, I, it was, I, I can't, I couldn't believe it either. Do you still speak to that friend? Mm. <laughs> yeah, I got over it. 
But um, yeah, so that, that first quilt is what got me started. And then it's kind of been, then I've developed from there, really. So I, I did a couple of different classes, got some books. I love books are my kind of go-to thing. Yeah. And so I love reading about quilts as probably as much as I like making them. Um, and yeah, it's kind of gone from there and it's become a hobby. And I, I suppose I've developed a style and an approach that I like. So I love using recycled fabric. Um, I love hunting for, I love flea markets and I love charity shops and I love hunting for stuff. Um, and the fact that I can do that and choose fabric and make it into a quilt just kind of justifies that hobby a little bit. So um, yeah. I, I, oft, my, I often spend a lot of my weekend hunting for um, fabric and other collections I have. Yeah, I think when you and I were chatting, you said to me that you just found some um, old orange overalls that had just been a, a worker's overalls then. You were so excited to start quilting with them. <laughs> there we are! <laughs> Fantastic! So that, yeah, so that's like a... Yeah, brilliant. Well, brilliant. That is, um, yeah, the orange is there, is those overalls. And it was only, it was only like a £1.50 for um, an, a set of overalls, and you get so much fabric. It's incredible value, and it stops it going to waste as well. So it's um... yeah. You see, this is this is really clever, and that's I think. Just talk, let's just talk about your class for a second, because that ties into what we're talking about mm. there. Um, uh, I think it's going to be a really interesting class, and I think I think you know whenever you're working with us, I think it's going to be interesting because it's from a, a perspective, isn't it, of sustainability, recycling, yeah. uh, uh, you know, hunting for fabrics and textures, obviously with your textiles <clears> background <throat> as well. I think, I think that's what's going to make your classes uh, very different to other classes. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited about the class and because I've taught at festivals and stuff and that's always fun. And the, there's loads of things that people get out of it, I find, and lots of people have said that they found that they, they've got like a, a I found the freedom to experiment after my class. Yes. They might not make or finish whatever they start, but they, they take away a freedom to experiment, which is what I think I took away from kind of when I spoke about my, my kind of um, uni and college stuff was that freedom to, you know, push yourself and do what you like and all that sort of stuff. So I think that's super important. And I think as well, if you're getting a shirt or something from the charity shop or a cotton dress or whatever it is, it tends to be pretty good value. So even if it goes wrong, and it can't really go wrong, I promise it can't really go wrong. You, you've supported a good cause, you've tried something, what's the worst that can happen? Exactly. Yeah, that is a really good point because, yeah, fabric is not uh, cheap, is it? You no. know, it can be very expensive. And so as you say, if you are just starting out as well, and you buy these lovely fabrics from these shops and then, you know, you, you, you do stitch in the wrong place and you have to unpick and then you start getting holes in your fabric or whatever. Yeah, you, you can be like, oh, and so it's, it, it, it is feeling a bit nervy, isn't it? It's like I used to, I mean, I equate it to when I lived in London, I used to go vintage shopping quite a lot for clothes, not to yeah. cut up and make things, but just to wear. Um, and I used to buy these amazing sort of little frocks and things and then I would just wear them. Now, that frock originally, when it was like a, you know, maybe it was a 1950s piece, would have been worn for best. Yes. Whereas I just wore it on a Wednesday. And the reason I wore it on a Wednesday is, I don't think we should save things for best anyway, because your best might never come. But I used to, you know, I wouldn't mind wearing it on a Wednesday because I bought it for £12.50 or whatever it was. Yeah. So it's the same sort of thing that, Absolutely. you know, it takes away that fear of, well, I might spill something down it, I might ruin it. Well, it's £12.50, it's not 150 So yes. Yeah. I'm the same. I go vintage clothes shopping quite a lot as well. And I, if if I'm not sure about a t-shirt or a shirt, then I tend to buy it because it's it's a couple of quid. And if I wear it once or twice, then it's still got some wear. And then obviously it becomes a quilt anyway. So it's kind of the journey, <laughs> the journey is complete. And I I love it. the other thing I think is that clothes are obviously designed to be worn next to your skin. So the quality cotton you get in, like particularly in men's shirts. It's amazing. And yes, yeah, some sometimes the cuffs are a bit worn or the collar, you know, at the back where it gets a bit worn. But you can cut those bits off and you can use the rest of it. And you get, I reckon, at least a couple of fat quarters from a, man, a bloke shirt. Yeah. And I always, I must admit, I always, and uh, this is particularly um, thrifty of me, but I, I start looking in the kind of triple XL section because the, the garments are priced the same. Yeah but you obviously get more fabric in the yeah. XL section, working your way down to small, but... You see, these, risky, are the, these are the top tips that we're going to get from your teaching, isn't it? That's a, you know, <laughs> you've just said something there that I never even thought about. 
that you know when you are using um you know recycled fabrics and you buy like you say a cotton shirt it's going to be a really good cotton because yeah. it's against the skin that's a really good point and, and if you are going to wrap yourself up in a quilt you don't want it to just look pretty it's got to it's got to feel nice as well yeah absolutely so all my quilt all the quilts i make and i make a lot they all get used and they all go onto my bed and you know in the winter a couple of extra quilts on top of a duvet is i think gives a nice um what's the word, weightiness yeah and uh, keeps you warm but then in the summer a quilt on its own is perfect because a duvet is too much but uh, yeah a nice quilt is amazing so um perfect for all seasons yeah and That's the quality healthy. is good and yeah. it's um it's also probably likely the likelihood is that they've been washed a load of times so it's not like brand new cotton, which can be a little bit stiff sometimes. It's it's been washed, it's been through it, and it's um it's still got plenty of life in it. Yeah, brilliant. And let's just talk about uh, well, you know, we should say now. I never, I never know. I never have a diary on me. Do you know in your classes? June. <laughs> J- June. It's in June. June. In- I know it's in June. <laughs> Kerry is Kerry there? Ruth, you'll do the you'll be the secretary for us, you, won't you, Ruth? Um, Ruth, can you just tell us when Chris's class is, please? <laughs> I think it's Ju- I think it's June the fifth. I think it is. I think it's the it's the first Saturday. Faith, oh, the web monkey's just telling me the web monkey's fifth of June there at you four go. p.m. There you yeah. are, fifth of June at four p.m. So that is your class. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people already have booked and are interested. So if you do want to come on that class, class, please do hurry up uh, to book your ticket. Let's talk though about crumbs, um, because I am still not sure. Because as you know, I have an interest. I run these classes. I yeah. work with amazing people. I'm not a quilter. So what is a crumb? So a crumb, very simply, is a is a scrap of fabric attached to another piece of fabric, and then you kind of repeat the process. So this is the this is the kind of cushion that we've been um, using as the example for the class. Yeah. So the obviously the the kind of red colour is just normal fabric, but all the other bits are crumbs. So here you can see um, where I've joined these different check pieces together. Yeah. Um, and then look at that one there, that's a good one, where it's got like loads, it's got a little bit of Liberty, a little bit of Alison Glass, and then a couple yeah. of checks as well from different shirts yeah. that I've had. Yeah. So nice. A, so really, it's a technique of using up scraps, yeah. and it's like scraps mixed in with improv is the best way I'd describe it. Okay. So, yeah, and then, <laughs> um, then um, yeah, uh, you kind of repeat the process, and you effectively you create a large piece of fabric, uh, which looks which could be a quilt, and I've done that actually, and just had it as a quilt. But then you chop it up into blocks, and then we turn them into half square triangles. Amazing. So my, so that really is going to be a skills buster of a class, isn't it? I mean, yes, it's a really, lot going it's, on in that class. It's, it's particularly good for beginners and people that you know. I I often say um, you just need the quilt. Sometimes it looks a bit complicated, but it isn't, and it's super easy. If you can sew a straight-ish line, then you're in business, and then. This is the back of it. Do you want to see the back? Yeah, yeah. So this is where this is why we need shirts for the class. Yeah. It looks like my belly a bit, but it isn't. (laughs) Yeah. So you can see that's two that's two shirts then, yeah. Two shirts welded together, yeah. Yeah. To provide and so rather than having to turn it to to sew like an envelope quilt, uh, sorry, uh, fastening, uh, you can you just use the buttons from the quilt. So if the shirts are a similar size that obviously helps yeah yeah brilliant yeah fantastic so that is that oh, class. this is and if you don't want to make the cushion cover that's fine because you could start like a little mini quilt yes yeah exactly and so on here you can see the crumbs a little bit better perhaps like there for example yeah yeah and then you can also this is a good one actually because you can see where i've um i've hand quilted with the crosses yeah. And then also I've done some machine quilting as well, just to give that interesting texture, which I love to do on my quilts. Yeah. So something oh. that size is, is super yeah. achievable and um, it will give you a feel I'm for yeah. everything. <laughs> We're doing a bit of it. Um, you know, one thing that is amazing about our teachers, and, and um, we had a lovely lady on the class the other day, on Nicholas Ball class called Sweeter, and she's in India, so bless her, it's always like midnight for her, and she's always sitting there with strong coffee trying to keep herself awake. 
uh, but she comes on a lot of classes and she said, you know, Rachel, I absolutely love the range of people that you have as teachers and what they all bring. And I said, yeah, you know, I know there are a lot of people out there who can do all, you know, who can teach people how to do a triangle or a block or whatever, but we do, uh, and that's fantastic. But I do want to try and give people that variety, uh, you know, and, and so people can learn a whole multitude of skills in each class. And you are absolutely a prime example of that, Chris. And, and what I also like about you as well is your enthusiasm. I love your enthusiasm and how excited you are about it. It's fantastic. Yeah. Thank, oh, well, thank you. It's nice to hear that. But yeah, I just think it's um, something I'm into and I like sharing it. And um, I think, I honestly think everyone can, you know, do something like this. And if you like it, brilliant. If you don't, well, at least you've tried it and you can see and you can, you can then know that you perhaps want to do a different approach, which is, which yeah. is absolutely fine. The, the, it's uh, quilting's a pretty broad church. So um, I think there's something for everybody. Yeah. And we, we have said, we're not going to talk too much about it, but Chris um, came up with some ideas recently uh, to do some creative, um, kind of getting your creative hats on, getting you creatively unblocked and, and helping you with these creative processes, bringing, you know, some of that degree that you were talking about there uh, into the fore, you know, in, in some classes in the autumn, which is going to be very exciting. So, yes. um, yeah, that's, I think you, you really do bring something very uh, different, a bit like our Gary Mills, really, because he's been around the block and done loads. And it's, it's just bringing that different angle uh, yeah. to your classes. I think well, I, I was, um, speak, I did the, um, an IG live yesterday and somebody asked me about the technique that people most often ask me about. And I, I think, and I reflected on this, and I don't, I often don't think it is a technique they ask about. I think it's more that they often ask about what goes with what, is this right? And I yeah. think it's more having people ask, people aren't perhaps as confident as they should be with their colour choices and stuff. At the end of the day, it's their quilt. And yeah. if you've chosen those colours, I absolutely believe that you've chosen them and it, you should trust your instincts a bit more and go for it. And, yeah. you know, I don't really follow any patterns. So, you know, it's down, you've, you've acc I've accumulated a lot of these fabrics because I wear them to start with. And then if I see something, I do tend to buy it. Um, and I keep them all, I don't, I, don't, I don't have a storage approach, I'm afraid. Uh, they all kind of live in a big pile. But then I see different combinations together and I just know that, that that's right for a quilt or that's right. So these ones behind me, for example, I just know they're going to work. And I think yeah. it's just trusting your instinct and having that um, faith in your ability and going for it. I think that's, yeah. what, that's probably one of the main things I learned at art college, I think. Yeah. And that's what you are hoping to inspire in other people. And that's really important because if you are into your quilting and your sewing, what you absolutely need before you pick up a needle and cotton and before you pick up a fabric is confidence, don't you? You yeah. need confidence in yourself and your abilities. And how do you get that? Get it through learning. So, you know, yeah, that's, that's something that I think you're going to give to a lot of people. And you're such a friendly, I mean, let's face it, Northern lad. I mean, we can't go wrong, can we, as Northerners? You're from, you're in Huddersfield. I was from Wakefield, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I am an adopted Northerner, so I wasn't originally from up north. I was, I was born down south, but um, I have gradually moved steadily northwards. You went the right way. Yeah, you went the right way. <laughs> well, so I've been here like, <laughs> I've been here like 20 years south. now, so that feels, I mean, that's quite a long time, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So you are a northerner. I'm, I'm just classing you as a northerner. Simple as that. Yeah, that's you fine. Are. <laughs> You're adopted northerner. Now, listen, yeah. um, one thing that is obvious about you um, is that you are a man. Yes. So this is interesting <laughs> in this quilting world because, you know, there aren't that many men. I mean, there are a few male teachers of note, but, you know, there aren't that many of you. So what do your what do your mates think of it? Your male friends? What you know when you, when you oh if you meet someone new or whatever and you what do you oh well I like quilting. You know, what do people say? Well, there's it well, it's a good question. I think um I think I like I don't just do quilting, so I like I like play football, I like to play cricket, I'm not very good at either. Um I do I do do some other things and people People just kind of accept it now. I think when I when it, like when I went to uni, which was a long time ago, it was it was similar. Not many men did textile design then. So again, so for me, it's always been like that. Um, and I've kind of I don't I, I don't suppose I notice what how people react because I, for me it's just completely normal. Yeah. And um, they yeah I get and 
particularly now that a lot of my friends are of a certain age, they're, they're, you know, they're settling down, they're starting to have kids, they want the quilt. So, you know what I mean? There's, yeah, there's, yeah. There's, um, there's suddenly a need and they're like, oh, who can make one? I was like, well, I can help them. So, yeah, yeah there's, there's, there was a little, you get some um, people that don't really know what they're on about, but I think that would apply to anything. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Well, I was talking to a friend of mine and I'd not seen him for a few months and, you know, he said, oh, how's the business going? And I said, oh, really, really good. And what did I say? Um, what did I use the term? It can't have just been quilters. I think maybe it was, you know. Yeah. I, it was just a simple term. Like I, I was saying how many quilters there were in America because it's millions, isn't it? And um, he turned around and he said, what's a, sorry, what's a quilter? And I just thought, well, everybody knows what a quilter is, you know, but so, and some people, it is a, it's like, what is that world all about? I mean, my yeah. parents, same with me. I mean, they used to watch me on Create and Craft. Uh, but they, you know, they, they, I think when I talked about this business and, and what we're going to do, I think they probably thought that I was going to get, you know, Betty down the road and Nora up the street to, to look yeah. at quilters. They, did, they didn't, you know, they didn't realise that it is such a huge world. But the thing is, I was going to ask you, uh, Chris, what do you, when you are quilting, what do you think you get out of it? Because I'm wondering if, even subconsciously, if there is a, a real kind of therapeutic thing in this in this sewing world. Yeah, I think there absolutely is. And I think, it's a, for me, I, I, fir I firmly believe that everybody is creative. And all that happens is people don't find the way to express it. And I was, I was, I was fortunate. I stumbled across quilting and I was lucky you know I was very fortunate to go to college and uni and do something that I loved and I you know I wish I wish I hadn't have gone when I did I wish I'd gone now because I'm, I'm more um, confident that this is what I want to do and I think sometimes I think you're right particularly with men saying that you're a quilter people like you know people might have different ideas about that and and it isn't it isn't a particularly seen as a particularly macho hobby but I mean, who cares? It's about expressing yourself creatively. And like, you know, I've played football, I do all sorts of other stuff as well. It doesn't, just because you have one hobby, I think, doesn't define you. And yes. um, what was my point? Yes, that everyone's creative and it's just finding the route, whether that's writing or cooking or whatever it is, there's, there's a million different ways to express it. And I think if you bottle it up, I don't, I don't think that's particularly healthy. I think it's right that you find a way to release it and, and to do something. And it doesn't matter if what you do doesn't get seen by anyone or win awards. I think it's just doing something because we have these thoughts and we, we see things we like and we want to express ourselves. And that's what I'm kind of into, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you just saying there that everybody is creative. Um, I was once reading an article and, and this person was saying the same thing, that we are, we are all born creative. And you think about it, if you go back to your primary school years, what's the thing that you do? You all, all get given a crayon. There's a crayon, there's a piece of paper, start drawing. And everybody does, all the kids, they do, yeah. they love it, you know. And I know some kids then go, as they get older, well, I'd rather do maths than creative industries. Absolutely, yeah. But I do think that is in us all. But you know what I think happens sometimes as well? And I'm not, I'm not blaming teachers at all because it's a curriculum and I know they have to follow this. But I do think there is a bit of that, um, right, no, don't go outside that line. No, keep yes. painting in the lines. <laughs> Draw within the lines. Why? Yeah, Why well, nice? I am, um, my son, um, he came home one day and he, was a, he wasn't upset, but he was a bit disappointed at how school had gone. And, He'd, um, he'd, he said he didn't like art. And I was like, oh, why? And because I'd, you know, I'd encourage him to be creative. And he's like, well, I did a drawing and it wasn't very good. And he, he um, I said, well, what defined good? And he's like, well, it didn't look like a photograph of what I was trying to draw. Yeah. And I was like, well, that, it, you know, to do that takes, A, takes years yeah. of practice. And B, might not actually be what um, you want to achieve. Tell, tell Picasso that. Exactly, exactly. So, and no, I think I no, think creativity, creativity is yeah. um, like any other muscle. The more you use it, the stronger and better it gets. If you leave it and it, to not do anything, it will it will slowly wither away. And I think that's what happens. And I understand with modern life, it's busy, but um, try, trying to find a little bit of time to be creative is a um, wonderful thing. Yeah, and I was just going to say about Picasso. What I I um, discovered about him, which is uh, amazing we went to um 
uh, Barcelona many, mm. many, when I went to Barcelona a couple of years ago, but I went many, many years ago. And there's a museum there. And we went to uh, the museums, just all about him. And um, I did not realize, you know, I, rela I equated Picasso with the, you know, the drawings with the, the one eye there and the, the line for the face, and all, which I absolutely love, because I, I mean, I do love modern art and I, and I loved all that kind of stuff. Did not realize when you look at his earlier work, he could paint like a photograph. Right. So if you look at the masters, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. he was that, that, I mean, I'm saying that good, but do you know what I mean? Yes. He could do that literal painting. So then for him to move into that other direction, and that's the thing that I think everybody has in them. And that's why, I mean, we're bringing it right back to a base level. But when we put all these classes on, I mean, I've just done my monkey minutes today, which is saying to people, you know, we've got a lovely cupcake FPP class. Now I know FPP, Chris, puts the fear of goodness knows what into people. They just go, no, I can't do that. I've tried, I can't. Ingrid is such an amazing teacher. And what I've said, you know, is I'm encouraging people, please just try it because just if you do it, as you said earlier, and you don't like it, you don't have to do it again, but you might find that it's within you, you know, yeah. or you, you might, you might have tried it before, the teacher might not have been great or whatever, or you might not, you know, the pattern might not have been right, but just try these things because I, I think you just have to keep searching. Keep yeah, absolutely. Searching I've done a couple of classes and they, they, I've got some projects that they didn't quite get finished and they may never get finished, but I've taken a certain element of that technique and then I've yes. incorporated that into my own work. So the class, the, 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 the kind of piece I set out or was being taught to do will never get finished, but elements of that technique yes. and stuff will absolutely. absolutely appear in my quilts. So, yeah. you know, I did um, like some needle turn applique and it was one of those Hawaiian um, uh, quilt blocks, which look amazing. Yeah. But I, I think I got about a quarter of the way through it and I've just put that on hold. But I, I've used that technique loads in my other quilts. So it's, um, I think it's, you know, if you get these different skills and you can adapt them for your own use. And that's, yeah. that's part of the fun, I think. Exactly. Exactly. Wow, isn't it? Well, it's like anything. It's like this conversation, Chris. I have no way, no idea. I never plan it. I never write anything down. It's not like I, it's not like I do my research and write the questions down. Never know where it's going to go. But that's like this conversation. It's just, you know, that's, that's the thing with life, isn't it? You've just got to sort of... My husband's got a great phrase. can't remember it now. <laughs> well, I can't remember it exactly as he says it, but it's, it's from a film. And it's something about like a twig on the shoulders of a mighty stream. And I can't remember which character says that. But, you know, it's whenever I say to her, if I'm stressing about something, I say, just let it go. Just be like a twig on the shoulders of a mighty stream. You're just going yeah. down the stream. See where it takes you. You know, you might end up down. And, and I do remember, here's another thing as well. I remember um, a friend of mine, uh, Tony, who was a hypnotherapist. And, you know, I was talking at one point to him about starting the business. This was a few years ago. And uh, I said, oh, I, I just, I've got too many ideas in my head. And he said, okay, what, what's it, well, how would you describe it? I said, it's like a whirlwind, just pick him up, pick him up, I can't. And he said, listen, what, you know, what, if you could do anything, what, what would you like to do with it relaxing? And I said, oh, I don't know. And I sort of sat there and I said, I'd love to drive across California. I'd like to get, you know, do the Route 66 mm, in an wow. open car. And he went, okay, right. Okay, so let's imagine you're in your car then. And he said, and you've got your map out in front of you. He said, now, and this is you. He said, this is you now with this map. And there's the business here at the end. So he said, so that's LA and you're in San Francisco. So this is you, it's zero, and you want to go to LA, but actually you want to build Crafty Monkeys. Yeah. And I said, yeah, right. And he went, okay, do you need to go in a straight line? I said, well, no. He said, Let, let's think about California. He said, you've got Yosemite over here, haven't you? You've got this, right. And he said, so you might want to visit Yosemite, but then still crack on to LA. Yes. So he said, and then actually you might not want to go to LA at all in the end. So yeah, and he went, that's how you've got to treat the business. You just literally said every day you go for a little drive, every day for a little drive. And you might see a signpost and you might be down that road and you have a look around and you find something amazing and then you get back on the road. Or you don't, you take another road. Or you might find mm, nothing down there. No problem. Fill the car back up, go back on the road, set off again. And he said, you just have to take it a step at a step and a step. He said, imagine you're just in that car and every day at the end of the day, if you can say you've driven a few miles, then you're doing well. And I've always remembered that. And that yes. is what life is about. Ab yeah, I absolutely agree. It's a great way of looking at it. Yeah. Don't think about the end destination and how you've got to get there because you don't know what's going to happen on the road. It might break down. No. 
And I, yeah, I can absolutely apply that to my quilts, actually. If you look, I bet if I put laid them all out chronologically, you'd definitely see an evolution of style and stuff. And I think that's the, the same thing, really, isn't it? Yeah, you, absolutely. You, you learn and adapt as you go. I think that's yeah. definitely, I can definitely say that about my, about my quilting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Um, Chris, should we have a look at the, what the comments are and see what people are saying? Oh, yes, please. People? Yeah. So now on your phone, you'll be able to see the Instagram feed. So you can yeah. have a look at what people are saying there. And I'll have a look at the old uh, Facebook. So let's have oh, a look. Wow. Uh, Ruthie says, happy Friday. Hello, happy Friday to you, Ruthie, baby. Caroline's watching. And Victoria, hello, Vicky. How are you? We need to do a little chitty chatty. Um, we've got uh, last year and we've got Viv watching, Julie. Uh, and Anne Marshall is watching. Loads of people watching this evening, which is fantastic. Uh, and what about you on your side? Yeah, there's lots of people. There's lots of names I recognise. So hello to everybody on here. Um, yeah, there's loads. There's no specific questions, I don't think. People are just listening. They're listening to our fascinating chat about journeys <laughs> to <North> America. <laughs> uh, oh, hi, Gabby. Oh, that, that's a good example of what I was talking about. So Gabby um, uh, runs a quilt shop in Chicago, and I happened to be in Chicago when they were doing a class on, I think it was... Um, I think it was Hexies and I'm, you know, I went because I wanted to do that kind of stuff whilst I was there. And I did the class yeah. and I made my Hexies. Yes, it was Hexies. I remember now it's coming back to me. And I made them and I thought, well, I'm not going to make a whole quilt, but occasionally I will make some and I will include them in my quilt. So um, that is an example of um, what I was talking about, I think. Yes. Is that Trudy just popped up? What's Trudy saying? Oh, someone's saying something there as well. Trudy is saying she totally agrees, which... I mean, she doesn't reference what, but... <laughs> I just totally agrees. I think, that's, prob I think that's fair enough to totally agree. <laughs> oh, someone's booked the class. That's exciting. Yay! Oh, and someone from San Diego. Hi, Kenza. Uh, it's the morning in San Diego, so that's exciting in itself. Hey, Kenza, oh, in San I have Diego. A question. I have a question. COVID has made me feel like I have to check to make sure I'm muted and camera is off. Yeah, I think. Yes. That's just, yes. I think that's just Zoom etiquette, isn't it? I've got much better at my Zoom etiquette. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not very good at this, am I? No, it's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting with bated breath. But yes, in terms of the Zoom, just to let people know, yes, when you, when you come onto a class with us, here's the thing. If you don't want to participate you want to sit in the dark with your camera off um and you want to be on mute and all you want to do is sit and eat your dinner while you watch and listen that is absolutely fine uh you don't ever have to join in you know at all uh so that's i don't it's, i'm not saying i don't care I, I don't care what you do i don't mind what you want to do you spend the money you get out of the class what you want to get out of the class and because of you know we've just got a lady who's booked this morning for tonight's class and I said to her, you know, you've got to have the scripts made for tonight's class. She said, no, I don't care. Should I just want to watch it? And I will say, if there is a pattern with a class, it's always best to book it because you get the video. If you buy the video later, you have to pay for the pattern. So it always makes financial sense that if you're interested, book the live class anyway, whether you can attend or not, because then you will get the pattern included for free. Um, and likewise, you know, people do message me and go, oh, I can only stay for the first half an hour, um, but I'm looking forward to the video. Is that OK? And I go, yeah, you can, leave, you know, you, you come and go as you please. I'm there. That's, yeah. that, that's why it's great that I'm there, because I am there letting people in. Because if people have Internet connection problems, they drop out. I let them back in, you know. So, yeah. You come and do as you please. It's your class to get out of what you want. Oh, is there's it? a question. Is the class about crumb strips? Yes, it is. But, but also more than that as well. So that's even better. It's crumbs plus. It's crumbs plus the loaf. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 def it's definitely crumbs. It's definitely a bit of improv. And it's definitely um, some half square triangles as well. And, yes. prob and some, some hand quilting and some machine quilting. So yeah. a real mixture of different things. Yeah. And if you go to the website, craftymonkeys.com, you just go to the workshops, scroll down. Here's a top tip for anybody who's using our website. Um, on the right hand side, there are about eight red dots. And you can just click on those dots and it takes you straight to the class. So it doesn't say what the class is. 
But what I'm saying is if you go to the first dot, it whizzes you down to the first class. If you go to the next dot, whizzes you to the next class. Right. So you can just literally go click, 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 click. Oh, there's what I'm interested in and read it rather than having to scroll down with your mouse. But yeah, if you scroll down onto our website, you will see uh, Chris's class, June the 5th, we believe, Saturday, 4 till 7. And yeah. Uh, yeah, all the detail is there about what, what you need, what the class is about, pictures, everything. And there's a video from Chris <laughs> shot by his son. Yeah, uh... <laughs> which, which, which I hasten to add, he um, did request payment for. Did he? Yeah. Well, he's he's seventeen. I don't know what to say apart from that. Well, what I would say to him is, if he wants payment from you, he needs to sort out his um, camera shaking and his sound qualities. Because <laughs> 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 what I loved was there's a great bit in the video. I mean, I edited it out. I managed to edit it, but there's a great bit where it was really. I loved it because he threw the cushion to you. Um, but you know, he saw, as he did as he was holding the phone, filming you. Of course, he was going to throw the cushion to you, but he had to get the cushion. So as he went to get the cushion, the phone moved, and then the phone moved. So literally, it was like, "Whoa, what's going on here?" <laughs> I but will, we made it work. I will. I will pass on the feedback to him, and um, yeah, pass on the feedback. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there any more? Any more questions? Anything? Oh, oh no! What have I done? Oh no! I oh, just oh, it's fine. I've got it back. I've got it back. For a second, I just put on a typing thing. Um, Great chat, Vivian is saying. Um, Tilly is saying that was such an inspiring end to my week. It's about trying and learning from our experiences. Um, oh, my soul is in Memphis. Hey, Memphis. Um, Tanya Memphis. is saying booking wow. now in California. Yay. Um, uh, and oh, my soul says I have half loaves and crumbs and orphan blocks like crazy. Uh, Ket, Ket Quilt is saying the class is in June. Yes, it is. It is on the 5th of June and it's, four, it's a Saturday. So it's 4 till 7 p.m. BST, which I believe Eastern time is 11 o'clock. I think they're five hours behind us. Yeah, I don't know about California. It would probably be very early in the morning. But we have had people in California who have got up on a Saturday morning at kind of four or five and they sit there in their pyjamas. Once again, if you turn your camera off, who cares? You just get out of bed and get a cup of tea or coffee. Um, you know, we're not going to see you. So, um, you know, and I always, I, I just always say, with I know with time zones it's difficult. We do, we do try and put... A Saturday afternoon class on so that Americans can join in mm. and we do the same on Friday nights but I appreciate on Friday people are working in the daytime in America but what I will say is that I know if it's an early start for you it's an early start but you know I kind of think if you're going on holiday and you have to get up for a flight you will set your alarm for three or four o'clock because you have to get up and get that airplane and that is a lot harder than making it into your computer room and turning your computer on <laughs> so I would always say I know it's early but if you really want to do the class just do it. Set your alarm. Have a good night's sleep the night before. Set your alarm and just get up and do the class. And then you can go to bed after. It's fine. It's fine. That's a good plan. You're fine. <laughs> it's a good plan. Right. I don't, what time is it? Do you have a watch on, Chris? Yeah, no. Sorry. Neither do I. Ruth, what time is it, Ruth? She always keeps me, because um, she knows I've got a class coming up. Ruthie, baby, what, what time is it? <laughs> I don't know what time it is. I think I better go because I've got a class. Right, that has been a lovely chat. Thank you so much. Uh, no problem. Thank you for having me on. To your world. I'm really looking forward to working with you. Um, just to say as well, I meant to email you today, Chris, to say we need to get a Zoom together, me, you and Kerry, to discuss our autumn plans. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, because very much into what you suggested. Um, so um, what have you got planned for the weekend? Anything exciting? Um, I'm going to watch the snooker this evening. Right. Um, which I don't know if you like it. Some people find it boring. I find it quite uh, kind of just n nice and relaxing watching the snooker. Charming. Yeah, Charming. exactly. I'm not into golf, but I usually like watching the um, the tournament where they win the green jacket. Is that Augusta? Oh, uh, the US Open. The US Open. And I, I don't really know what's going on, but I quite, if it's on, I'll sit down and watch it because I just find it quite relaxing. Yeah, there's something about the ball in flight, isn't there? That's nice. Yeah. So I'll watch that tonight. I'll be, probably get, I'll go to the flea market tomorrow and then my son will be playing cricket tomorrow, hopefully if the weather's all right. So I'll speak to him about that. And just, it's bank holiday as well, isn't it? So um, yeah. no work no work on Monday. So probably a lie on Monday. Yes, we're going to go out and do something on Monday because I'm working all weekend. So that'll be our weekend. But, yeah, uh, fair enough. Yeah, it'll be nice. Lovely. Well, listen, I'm going to say goodbye to Facebook first of all. So thank okay. you very much to Facebook people. Uh, and we will see you all very soon. Bye-bye, Facebook. Bye-bye.
<laughs> okay, so that's them gone. Um, and we'll say goodbye to Instagram. Thank you so much to everybody who's joined us tonight on Instagram and commented and liked and watched. And thank you to our lovely Chris. Can't wait to start working with you. We're so glad we found you. And uh, yeah, have a lovely, lovely bank holiday Monday, everybody. And uh, we will see you all very soon. Right, take care, Chris. Thanks. See bye you bye. later. Bye. bye.